It's the taste of paradise, the best of traditional food prepared and served in an authentic cultural setting. At first glance, it appears a heaven's delight, a vibrant display of colors and heavenly aromas, culture and tradition mixed in with a lot of nature. Life in the South Pacific Kingdom of Tonga appears simple and carefree. Its islands symbolize the very definition of paradise. Tradition runs deep here, and food is an integral part of the traditional culture. But even these isolated friendly isles aren't sheltered from the social and economic challenges which have impacted on people's diets, a challenge faced by the rest of the Pacific. The island archipelago of Tonga has a rich biodiversity and fertile land to grow food. Like most Pacific Island nations, Tonga has traditionally thrived on agriculture and fishing. Subsistence farming has been the mainstay of people's lives, and the country has also had significant success with commercial farming and agricultural exports. Recognizing that the agricultural export market holds the greatest promise for Tonga's economy, the government is making efforts to revitalize the sector. The economic and social problems we are facing at today's level, such as the increasing rate of non-communicable diseases, huge food import bills, etc., emphasizes the need to scenes for scenes. The influx of imported foodstuff have increasingly changed consumer choices and thereby greatly impacting on our people's dietary preferences and perception. This change is also evident in our hospitality and perception about our own unique cuisine. In April 2015, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, SPC, held a week-long initiative consisting of a number of activities in the Kingdom of Tonga in an effort to strengthen the linkages between agriculture and tourism. With the theme, Think Global, Go Local, the week was aimed at equipping local chefs and local farmers with the information and tools to make better use of local produce in the menus served at hotels. Organized by the European Union-funded Pacific Agriculture Policy Project, PAP, and Tonga's Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Forestry and Fisheries, MAF, a one-day farmers training program was held in the capital Nukualofa to start off the activities. I think it's a, it's a very um, useful workshop. Uh, as, as I understand it, it's, uh, it's more to do with the uh, uh, you know, the smallholders, the farmers, you know, linking up with the, uh, like, uh, hotels, uh, restaurants and all that, uh, you know, to have a market for their products and also for the tourist industry to have a reliable supply of uh, good quality uh, food uh, products, not only uh, crops and vegetables, but also uh, livestock and uh, fisheries also. But the problem here is that, that the soil needs air. Majority of Tonga's agriculture is still based on traditional farming systems. Farmers often grow cash crops alongside subsistence crops to supply both domestic and export markets. Root crops are both a staple of the Tongan diet and an export crop, and yams, taro, cassava and sweet potatoes dominate cropping systems. The fundamental aim of this week is to, is to elevate the importance of agriculture and opportunities that are in tourism for farmers. So we've had a series of, uh, of workshops this week or of, of, of events and um, we've used, I guess if you like, SPTO's comparative advantage in tourism. That is, they work very closely with chefs, they work very closely with hotels. And to marry that with SPC's comparative advantage for agriculture, which is who work with farmers, who work with linking farmers to the markets. So both of those two strengths, we are marrying them together here in Tonga. 
and working with the relevant agencies in Tonga, that is the Ministry of Agriculture, the tourism agencies, to put this event together. Viliami Lui is a farmer from Fuomotu on the eastern district of Tonga Tapu. He farms on an eight acre piece of land dedicated to sweet potatoes, cassava, yams, and taro. Twice a year, he exports sweet potatoes to New Zealand. Most times, he tries to sell his produce in the local market to earn him some weekly income. Uh, this time, uh, I got a kumara there. Eh? So uh, I, I sell it out in the market here in Tonga. And, and when it uh, to flood the, the produce here in Tonga, I'll ship to New Zealand. Eh? In New Zealand, I can take uh, 150 up to 200 packs of, of kumara. And I, and I ship there two times a year. Okay. And I got a money there uh, helping to my family's need. Uh, uh, but here in Tonga, I, I, I'm looking for, uh, for, for, for some uh, market uh, to sell the crops here in Tonga. For the past eight years, I've been in, in restaurant operation. Uh, I didn't have a, a, a sustainable supplier that I could rely on. Uh, but after this workshop, uh, after having conversation with other suppliers, I, I think I should be able to, to create a relationship with them and also provide them with the demands that I want uh, on certain produce and uh, uh, more on organic. So for me, it is important that my supplier knows and understand what I need uh, so that I can buy the product, so that whatever put on the outcome on my plate would be uh, better for my customers. It's not very often one gets a chance to get first-hand advice from technical experts on how to utilize their produce and find markets. That's one of the reasons why Viliami attended the farmers' training, to understand how to access more local and overseas markets and build his networks here on. The relationship from, uh, from, uh, with the chef here, like today, eh? we have talking with them and they ask for the phone if they want what they can call me or that. Eh? It's good. Eh? If the five are chef, uh, they can call me and they order me two basket, two basket plus, I can bring ten at, at once. Yes, I like it. Eh? It's good for me to do it. Ministry of Agriculture is more, is more is helpful, more helpful for the for the farmers. Eh? But if they, they they work hard on finding a, a, a market for the farmers, uh, I think it's, it's a good thing for them to increase the of trying uh, looking for a farm for a market for the farmers. A loyal and passionate smallholder farmer, Akinesa Aho, is eager to discover the linkage with the tourism market. She is amongst a group of women from the village of Kolomotua who are involved in backyard gardening, growing vegetables and crops. Like her counterparts, she hopes to find some local markets for her produce. Her golden opportunity came two days later when she met local chefs eager to put their local food onto their menus. It's very interesting and very beneficial for our, our little um, company that we started, um, especially that we don't have many training for, we just set it up and start from there and uh, to get financial fund, it's very hard. So we try and sell it locally and try to order some from overseas, the plants, that we don't have it in Tonga. On 22nd April 2015, local chefs from restaurants in the capital attended a three-day culinary training at the Aho Panilolo Institute in Maofanga. The training was designed to enhance the capacity, knowledge, cooking standards and skills of the tourism industry culinary staff. 
In two days, the chefs will need to put a Pacific cuisine together and turn it into a five-star meal, all in an effort to support the production of local food crops that play a vital role for good nutrition and food security. But I normally adapt to the Euro European style of, of cooking and French, and, but uh, when this uh, project comes in of uh, uh, focusing on the local produce, I think it's just adapting whatever I've learned for the past uh, 10 years and just use that uh, idea into using local produce. It is very important for us chefs to, um, to work very closely with the farmers and to tell them what they need um, and for the farmer to provide them including what they need. However, none of this would be possible without the renowned chef Robert Oliver. His watchful gaze and approach in the kitchen placed the pride back into the Tongans' own homegrown food. For these chefs, it was about discovering part of their culture, and that is traditional Tongan food. When I saw the concept, uh, think global and go local, you know, I really, you know, admire the, the idea because it's a uh, it's something that the, you know, our cuisine has started missing out. And I'm talking about the, the, the Tongan cuisine, but it would be the same, a bit similar to all the South Pacific cuisine as in Fiji, Samoa and, and the rest of the Pacific region. And I think it's, uh, it's something that our chefs here in the kingdom uh, has to focus on as we are losing that uh, touch into using local ingredients. So I think the, the whole concept of, the, of this workshop, it actually push uh, our art you know, of culinary into a, uh, back into the, the stage of uh, cooking. I would like to thank uh, Robert. It's, um, the whole training for me was so effective and efficient. And um, the lesson I expected to learn from, because actually doing my catering, there are two challenges that I face. Uh, first is the inconsistency of the supply of what I want locally and, you know, even the imports uh, goods. Uh, not only for, uh, for example, not just for the vegetables and fruits, but um, uh, other things like the spices, the sauces, and all that. I grew up in a in a home I was adopted by my grandmother, and I'm, I'm kind of familiar with uh, our local cuisine. But then, when Rob, uh, Robert came and we did a little TV show, I, I started to um, interest in in transforming our local cuisine into um, a bit higher level than where it was um, before. Born in New Zealand, Robert Oliver grew up in Fiji and Samoa. For the past 20 years, Robert has owned and run restaurants across the globe. The celebrity and, um, chef has been working with a team of chefs in each country in the South Pacific to put their local food onto the menus of top resorts. Here in Nukolofa, they're making a real Pacific cuisine to bring back to life the fast disappearing traditional food knowledge. I think what's emerging is that um, there's such a robust and terrific local cuisine that's not fully utilised in commerce. It's in the homes, it's in the villages, it's in the feasting and it's in some of the smaller restaurants that maybe if you visit you may not notice them, you know. But it's not forefront in Tonga's tourism uh, marketing or brand. The cuisine journey begins with a preparatory discussion on the planned menu for the cuisine. A visit to the market located in the center of the capital puts a smile on their faces as farmers showcase their healthy produce. The whole three meal course takes a few hours to prepare with various groups preparing different dishes. There's a lot of natural talent. People don't need to be taught. 
Um, actually, it's me that gets taught in these situations. It's an opportune time to come and um, kind of point out to everybody, you've got a really terrific cuisine. It's a great um, uh, national brand asset. And it says who you are. And you're really good at it and no one else does it. And by the way, when you do this, you link to your local farmers and you create the, you know, the possibility of a fully independent Tonga, actually. Papiloa Fialiku is an iconic figure in the kingdom, a charismatic figure, affectionately known as the mother of Tonga. She encourages the production and consumption of traditional Tongan food sourced from backyard gardens. Tourism and agriculture and fisheries are the deciding factor. We really need uh, help to push our economy, but have your theme. Let us be proud who we are. In my view, I've been in tourism since 1970. It's people and our culture. The true South Pacific, what he has put in our presence today. We are a kingdom, the remaining kingdom of the Pacific and Polynesia. Traditional intelligence and knowledge generated from gathering and harvesting together with newly introduced styles of cooking will define a new era for food in the kingdom. And I just want to say it's just been such a blast to be here. It's been awesome to be back in Tonga. Um, and, and it's been so uh, inspiring to have chefs and farmers working together. I see a lot of I see the, the um, spirit of independence emerging from this because actually with tourism as a driver and cuisine connecting the tourism industry to the farmers, you could have, you'd have no need for, for overseas funds. I see a completely independent spirit of Tonga emerging from this process. Tongans are passionate about their food and like the rest of the South Pacific Islands, have ancient cultural practice where food plays a central part socially and ceremonially. The Ministry of Tourism, together with key stakeholders, is working to increase demand for Tongan food producers and the fishing sector to make a wider range of authentic Tongan cuisine available to visitors and to locals, to improve food and beverage product quality and availability, and to contribute to the Tongan economy. We want also to encourage local sourcing of ingredients in authentic recipes. Furthermore, we support and promote the concept of sustainable cuisine and sustainable tourism, linking the key players in the tourist industries, farmers and growers, fishermen, and the village communities as a whole. We have a new government now. And that is the aim of the government, is to create the linkages and make, uh, and make it ensure that there is a strong linkage between exporters and the market and also the producers you know, here. And, and I see this as a, as a good start for us. Yes. We've got 20 farmers here uh, as part of these events this week and we've got 20 hoteliers. And so one major event that we've had this week was to match to get these two together in the same room and talk about what is it that hoteliers want, or chefs want, and what is it that farmers want, uh, can supply. And I guess that's a, that's a starting point. It's, it's a starting point of a, of, a, of a longer journey. And I guess we are here to start building some of those blocks. I'm keen to take this to the next level now because they've been really clear on what they want. And what they want is um, a, a better way of working with the local agriculture providers. They want education to go in both directions. They want the farmers to know what they want, and they want to know what the farmers can make. They also want, it's, it's come up, the way they want the information is through the internet. They want web-based information portals. That's where, where, that's where the convenience and the database sh should sit, um, and they've been very clear about that. The onus is on the farmers, chefs or restaurant owners to ensure and encourage the use of local food resources, the cuisine menus, innovation and creativity in food preparation. 
With help, they could contribute significantly to a reinvigorated agriculture sector, a secure economy and a healthier Tongan population. Whilst we cannot stop the tides of globalization, we can certainly change the way we think and act for our benefit as well as our friends visiting our shores.